Hi guys, so this is going to be, this is actually part of a bigger um, presentation, but this is kind of just going to be a little crash course in evaluation of cytology. And first we'll start with some general categories and um, just go over some basics. So first you want to think about whether what you're looking at is normal or if it's an abnormal finding, meaning could it be something that's there in the tissue that's normally there or is it something that's not supposed to be there. And then you can think about whether you have inflammation present and if you do have inflammation, what is the type and is there a cause for it being there and then whether or not you have neoplasia present. If you have inflammation, the types of inflammation that you can have are neutrophilic, pyogranulomatous with the pyo part in parentheses um, because it can just be granulomatous. Pyo refers to neutrophilic portion of the inflammation and eosinophilic as well as lymphocytic types of infiltrates. If you have neoplasia, you need to know whether it's benign or malignant and the categories of that are going to be round cell, spindle or mesenchymal, epithelial, and other types of neoplasms. If you're evaluating and you're asking first if it's normal versus not normal, you have to think about the location you're in and think about whether what you're seeing in that location is actually just resident populations of cells. This is a kidney aspirate and these arrows are pointing to normal renal tubular epithelial cells that can be seen um, when you aspirate the kidney. Other things you can see, um, whether it's normal or abnormal, can be um, categories of inflammation. So these are some eosinophils that are usually not present, and this is a picture of lots of different types of lymphocytes. This might be a picture of a node, but I'll use it later as an illustration of lymphocytic infiltrate. So these are plasma cells, small lymphocytes, intermediate sized lymphocytes. And so um, that inflammation is not necessarily normal for that, for that type of um, situation. Here we have a picture of liver. And here is a crystal that we can sometimes see in the cytoplasm of the liver. And it's just a normal finding, although a little bit infrequent. Um, if you have inflammation, you want to think about the type and if there's any cause for that inflammation being there. Neutrophilic inflammation, here we've got a bunch of different neutrophils. Some degenerate forms of neutrophils, all of these are neutrophils. Remember that degenerate changes are nuclear changes that can happen. Here's some inflammation, neutrophilic inflammation, secondary to, here's all these neutrophils in the background, secondary to in the background here is some um, bile that's present, so that's causing the inflammation there, so that's one reason to see a cause of neutrophilic inflammation. You can also see pyogranulomatous, again the pyo part in parentheses, so here we've got a bunch of Here we've got a bunch of inflammation, mostly macrophages, but also neutrophils in the background here, a bunch of neutrophils, and also all these clusters and clumps of macrophages. And then we've got more of granulomatous inflammation. We've got multinucleated giant cells present multinucleated giant cells, some plasma cells, without really the um, neutrophilic components being present, so a granulomatous type of inflammation. And then we've got examples of eosinophilic inflammation. If you can see here, most of these, all of these cells really are um, granulated and pink, and these all are eosinophils. Here we've got an example of lymphocytes. plasma cells and some 
plasmacytoid cells and some small lymphocytes, eosinophilic inflammation here also, and some intermediate sized lymphocytes. And then the next thing we want to think about for categories is going to be neoplasia and whether it's benign or malignant is what we need to ask. Remember that when we were, use the word neoplasia, that it can be used with either benign or malignant populations of cells. Benign and malignant is often defined on architecture based on histology. And here we've got a benign neoplasm, a histiocytoma, and here we've got some sort of spindle cell tumor and the histology that would correlate to it is often um, a nice, well-circumscribed situation going with benign lesions versus a breaking out and breaking through and being invasive for these malignant um, situations. We don't have architecture on cytology. Um, here's a picture of a histologic section, and so we can assess invasion, and so, what we look at when we're um, evaluating cytology is we're reliant on criteria of malignancy. And the criteria of malignancy include pleomorphism in terms of nuclear cell size and shape variations, anisokaryosis, which is based variation in the nuclear size, differences in chromatin patterns, irregular nucleoli, multinucleation, and nuclear molding are all features that we look at for criteria of malignancy. So again, in terms of neoplasia being benign or malignant, we can have populations that are round cell populations in which we have individualized cells that are discrete and dispersed. We can have spindle cell populations or mesenchymal populations um, in which they have a spindled shape, um, often with like little tails. And then we can also have epithelial populations in which the cells kind of aggregate into these islands and they have cell-cell junctions. They can arrange in asinar structures or in clumps that are actually cohesive to each other. We can have also have other categories of neoplasms such as endocrine, neuroendocrine, which look like bare nuclei sim swimming in a sea of cytoplasm where you don't see distinct cell borders. Always take into account whether or not you have inflammation present in your slide that you're examining because inflammation can alter the morphology of the cells. For example, with spindle cells, spindle cells have to be interpreted with lots of caution in the face of inflammation because the spindle cells could just be reactive, meaning non-neoplastic forms of fibroplastic um, spindle cells that are there in face of inflammation. And epithelial cells also warrant cautious interpretation in the face of inflammation because they can display dysplastic changes, so changes that are not malignant but which can seem atypical. So in terms of examples of round cells, um, here are some discrete cells that we have here, individualized. They might be aggregating together just because of how the smear is made, but they're actually discrete cells with no cell-cell junctions. Here's some lymphocytes in the background, and this is a histiocytoma. This is an example of a lymphoma. You can see here we've got a neutrophil, and all of these cells that are lymphocytes are all bigger than the neutrophil, so that can be some basic um, features of a lymphoma where all the cells start to be bigger than the neutrophil and we have very few of these small lymphocytes here which are smaller than the neutrophil and we use that neutrophil as a measuring stick in cytology and when all the cells and greater than 50% of the cells in a node start to be bigger than a neutrophil that qualifies as lymphoma or large cell lymphoma. This is a plasma cell tumor here also a round cell tumor, and you can see that these actually have some flame figures. Um, some flaming figures. These um, production of immunoglobulin can start to look pink on the edges, but these are actually discrete cells. They're kind of aggregating together, but they're discrete cells individualized without cell-cell junctions. And this is an example of a plasma cell tumor. 
Here's an example of a mast cell tumor where you can see all the granules in the background and associated with these nuclei, and this is a mast cell tumor. And then we can have spindle and mesenchymal populations. Here we see a bunch of spindle-shaped cells with a bunch of matrix um, over here, and this is all matrix, this pink um, stippled proteinaceous extracellular matrix background. Here's another example of a spindle cell population. Again, they're aggregated together, um, but they don't actually have cell-cell junctions, and you can see they're often wispy in shape, um, individualized wispy with poor cell-cell junctions, and you can see that sometimes they make these islands, but they also have swimmers off the coast, and that's how I like to describe spindle cells as opposed to epithelial cells that are often just islands without any swimmers off the coast. Here is a nice close-up of our spindle cells, and you can see these wispy tails that are occurring. And so these spindle-shaped or mesenchymal cells here. Here's another example of spindle cells with some extracellular pink matrix. Another example of a spindle cell population with wispy tails and um, aggregated but not attached cells. Here's an example of adipose tissue. Um, you can see the adipocytes clustering together and those are a mesenchymal population. And then um, this is also another spindle cell population with some red cells diapodesing through the cytoplasm and this might be a hemangiosarcoma. Epithelial populations on the other hand form tight adherent aggregates, kind of like these islands with each of these cells adhering to each other in, with cell-cell junctions. Another example of an epithelial population, this time with a little bit of atypia, a little bit of um, anisocaryosis and disorganization. And this one here is another epithelial population, but this is has a lot of criteria of malignancy, anisocaryosis, anisocytosis, large crazy nucleoli, and this is a carcinoma, probably a, um, a carcinoma there. Other types of cell populations that we see are malignant neoplasia that are not otherwise categorizable on cytology. Um, this is a pretty crazy looking neoplasm. Um, has a lot of features of malignancy here, multinucleation, anisocytosis. Here's a neutrophil for size comparison. These are also karyomegalic, meaning they're quite large um, in size. It allows of anisocytosis, anisocaryosis, some multinucleation, and atypical nucleoli. Here is some uh, melanoma. There is some finely stippled pigment that might not be visible to you in these slides, but there's some finely stippled pigment here, and these are um, another category of neoplasm that doesn't fit neatly into epithelial or mesenchymal. This is an example of endocrine neuroendocrine where we have some kind of associated but um, often kind of bare nuclei looking cells swimming in a sea of cytoplasm. Sometimes they can make kind of acinar structures there. And remember always an important thing to ask yourself is, is it really neoplasia or could it be inflammation? Because sometimes they can have overlapping features where sometimes inflammation can start to look very scary um, and people confuse it for a malignancy or a neoplasm. Some things to remember are that there are caveats in terms of well-differentiated populations that can look very normal cytologically um, in terms of not having criteria of malignancy, but they may on histology note that they are malignant. Um, some of the more notorious 
um, types of neoplasms that do that are hepatocellular in origin, endocrine, neuroendocrine, and some forms of basaloid tumors that can look well differentiated but behave um, aggressively. All right, that's it. That's your crash course in cytology. We'll see you in class and go over a bunch of cytos.